Final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 13110 in the name of Christine Graham on Through Our Eyes. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Uh, Ms Graham, if you're ready, seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. May I first of all thank all who supported this motion, the authors of Through Our Eyes, this booklet, the product of kinship carers who took part in a creative writing course, and all kinship carers in Minlothian, many of whom are here tonight and across Scotland, without whom so many children would be without the love, support and guidance essential to childhood. As at 31st July 2014, there were over 15,500 looked after children, from 2013, there has been a decrease, but this gives an indication of the number of families affected. But I want to focus away from figures and statistics and to the impact on the carers as described in this book. And I think the best thing I could do, Deputy Presiding Officer, is read extracts from it. And I'm going to start with a passage which starts with, where do I begin? Life as we knew it changed. A normal routine became a series of meetings, core groups, looked after children reviews, children's hearings and child protection. Jargon such as parallel planning, rehabilitation and Section 11 residency orders was commonplace at the meetings. It was presumed that I understood the purpose of each meeting, presumed that I understood social work terminology, presumed that I would make myself available for every meeting and for social work visits, presumed that I was coping fine I cannot count the number of times I was told I was doing a great job. I was not in control of my life anymore. And life went on. Now we're almost eight years down the line and I can't imagine what my life would be like if I'm not raising my grandson. He goes on to say, was it the life I would have chosen? No way. Would I ever change it? No way. And from another extract and called, I don't want this, well, my family are fine, strong and supportive. We will deal with this, but I don't want this. This mess that wasn't my making. I could start at the very beginning and tell you about my daughter and her problem, or I could tell you about the hell of living with a drug addict. I could call him, the father, any vile name I could think of, but this is not about them, and I will not make it about them, but I don't want this. This is about my grandson and about adoption, about him being adopted, and it can't be happening. And another one called Our Precious Grandchildren. This is about a court battle. We went to court again, and it was dad against mum. The judge told us it was only those that mattered who could stay. We told him that we'd been looking after our grandchildren for the last year. The judge then told us we matter. At last, we could have our say. Mum said her piece. Dad said his, and then we were able to speak. Our son was asked what he had to offer his children. He said, discipline. We were asked the same question. We replied, love. Shortly after the hearing, we were allowed to take the children away for a three-week holiday to Canada. When we were there, we found out we had won the case and we could keep the children with us. It was a further six years after the court case that we found out that we had Section 11 and had parental rights and responsibility. At last, we could stop worrying about someone coming and taking away our precious grandchildren. And another story called Life Changes. This is from a, a parents, a grandparents who take care of two granddaughters and also a great grandson. And he gives us a typical day, which some will recognize from their parenting. 7 a.m., up, wash, shave, and have a cuppa. 7.30, wake up eldest granddaughter for school. 7.45, wake up great grandson and dress him. 7.55, take granddaughter round to bus stop, then home. 8 o'clock, wake up wife and help her if needed. 8.15, wake up my other granddaughter. 8.30, take great grandson to school, then home. 9 o'clock, make sure other granddaughter is ready for taxi to school. 9.15, Check on my wife to make sure he's okay and the rest of the day is all organised round the children. My days are not what I imagined they would be like at this stage of my life. It's exhausting at times and sometimes I feel my life is no longer my own. But when I think back, 
I remember I was working so hard when my own children were growing up, I missed a lot. Now that I have my grandchildren, it's like having a second chance. I can now honestly say I enjoy our lives together and truly love seeing them develop into our next generation. These are all stories from the heart. And some of them tell, as many will recognize, of sons or daughters who become drug addicts or have relationships with drug addicts. And the children that go to these grandparents are often quite damaged and traumatized. And these are grandparents who are looking at a different stage of their life. Some of them had to sell their houses. Some of them had to give up jobs. But not one of them thought they would turn their back on the children. And we do, to some extent, take them for granted. I don't mean we mean to take them for granted. But the thing about this book, which I found extremely moving through our eyes, is that there's guilt. There's people who wish for a time they didn't have that life but we'd now never change it. People who were thrown into the situation they thought their life was going to take a different tack, but would never, ever have turned their back on their grandchildren. And here's somebody who says, now, it's under story now, I've been a kinship carer for 15 years, but we had our grandchildren a year before that. Over the years, I've heard so many things that have been done to the grandparents and the children through alcohol and drugs. But with all the things that happened to us and against us as grandparents, we all become stronger. The grandparents group lay on events and outings for the children we got go to because we're just big kids ourselves. I feel we're like all one big family helping each other. And what I feel is important about this book, and I know the grandparents pinned again in Kinship Cairns and Midlothian want to happen, is that they want social workers to read these stories. They want trainee social workers to read these stories. To remember, as the first story illustrated, the jargon that is put before these grandparents is bewildering. The time it takes, the concern that despite having physically looked after the children for years, you may have them taken away from you. I think this is essential reading and I recommend it to parliamentarians here and I'm glad you're here to, to hear it, some of you, but I also recommend it to anybody involved with kinship carers through the various agencies. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And thank you. And now call on Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Kenny Gibson. Uh, can I begin by congratulating um, Christine Graham on introducing this motion and say that I have actually signed the motion, but it doesn't appear because I, I put the wrong number, but uh, it should be corrected hopefully uh, tomorrow. I would also, of course, congratulate uh, the group uh, who've been meeting for um, quite a long time in Midlothian and, and certainly commend their uh, very moving and powerful uh, publication, which I, I was pleased to read uh, this morning. And as Christine Graham says, I think uh, uh, her recommendation that all social workers should read it is a very uh, good recommendation. I think we all talk about learning from the experience of whether it's patients in the health service or service users from local councils or, or whatever. But I think that principle is absolutely right. Listen to what uh, people who are saying who've learned from experience what it's all about. And social workers could certainly profit from uh, uh, reading uh, this publication. But of course, in, in, in paying tribute to these particular grandparents, I think we should pay uh, tribute to, to all uh, grandparents who are kindred uh, kinship carers, perhaps to all uh, grandparents uh, more widely. As a grandparent myself, I, I totally understand the amazingly strong bond uh, that, uh, that exists uh, between a grandparent and a grandchild. In my experience, it's, it's of the same strength as the bond that exists between a parent uh, and a child. And I think grandparents more generally play a very important part in the lives of their grandchildren, at least very many grandparents do, often providing childcare and other support. So we, sh we should remember that uh, at, uh, as part of our consideration today. But clearly, being a grandparent kinship carer is of a different order uh, of magnitude, and, uh, and many particular challenges and problems uh, face grandparents in that situation. And they're documented uh, really most powerfully in the publication, but clearly. Uh, others have written about them. For example, Citizens Advice Scotland did some work on this and highlighted problems uh, uh, such as uh, perhaps having to give, a, give up work, arranging and paying for childcare, dealing with financial problems, the need uh, for uh, respite care, pressure uh, on, on, on the grandparents' own relationship and so on. So this has been documented in studies, but I think uh, the, the, there is a particular um, particular. Um, um, 
truth uh, in, in reading it from grandparent kinship carers themselves. As it happens, and just by coincidence, yesterday a constituent who's a grandship kinship carer, just beginning to become a kinship carer, I came into my constituency uh, office entirely, as I say, by coincidence, and she certainly outlined some of the challenges that she's facing. Um, for example, she's working full time, so how is she going to manage to deal with uh, looking after the child? Obviously, one of her key demands is for some help uh, with childcare, and uh, I'm obviously helping to investigate that for her, and hopefully we can make progress uh, on it. But that was just a small example that just uh, came uh, across my uh, desk uh, yesterday. Christine Graham talked about 13,000 looked after children, and of course many kinship uh, carers are looking after a looked after child, but equally uh, there are uh, many other kinship carers who have children who are not looked after in the formal sense of looked after by the local authority, and that was one example for me yesterday. And clearly there's a particular issue because while looked after uh, children have certain uh, rights in terms of entitlements that the kinship carer will receive, those looking after children who are not in that category really have no uh, rights at all and the, the support they get from, the, the, from local authorities is entirely discretionary. Now I realise that, and perhaps the Minister will talk about this in our wind-up, that there are regulations coming on the back of the recent Young People's Bill which will uh, give certain rights to uh, kinship carers looking after children who are not formally looked after. So certainly that uh, will hopefully improve the situation, but at, at present it is entirely discretionary. And although support can be given through uh, the use of the 1995 Children's Act or the 1968 Social Work Act, we know that this is entirely discretionary. So uh, the quicker we can have uh, these uh, regulations uh, introduced, the better. But let's end once again by uh, paying tribute to Christine Graham, but even more importantly to uh, the grandparents who have uh, produced this magnificent publication through our eyes. Many thanks. I now call on Kenny Gibson to be followed by Dr Nanette Mill. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I begin by thanking my colleague Christine Graham for securing this valuable uh, debating time uh, or, uh, to discuss and debate this important issue. Uh, the work of kinship carers is not always fully understood and all too often overlooked entirely. However, the love and care they provide is invaluable, not only to the children they look after, but to society more generally, allowing some of our most vulnerable children to remain within their wider family instead of going into institutionalised care or to a foster family. And kinship care is often far more challenging than many people realise and impacts enormously on the carer's life. Uh, for grandparents, it can sometimes be quite daunting, particularly when they believe that their life uh, is going to uh, go on a different path than the one they perhaps had uh, envisaged. It is wrong to assume that kinship care is simply a normal family obligation with near seamless transitions from one household to another. Indeed, the circumstances surrounding the need for kinship care can often be incredibly complex and difficult to deal with, both for the child and their carer. As the book Through Our Eyes successfully explains, kinship carers can often find the role they have assumed extremely demanding and simply do not have the knowledge or support to cope, at least initially. Uh, children may experience mental health problems or be traumatised as a result of domestic violence, bereavement or neglect. And as Christine Graham makes clear in her motion, stories with titles such as I don't want this, it was only for a couple of weeks, where do I begin and a long road ahead uh, show this compelling and heartfelt uh, uh, book uh, um, as it, uh, it affects people uh, who have to deal with, uh, with these issues on a day-to-day -day basis and provides a unique in insight into the challenges kinship carers face. It is therefore important that we as a parliament do what we can to recognise and confront this reality and support kinship carers as they manage in often very difficult circumstances. In this vein, I would like to make special mention of Children First and recognise the vital work they carry out to support, support kinship carers through their National Helpline and National Kinship Care Service, which offers advice, support and information to kinship carers. It is also through their consultations with kinship carers that we can build a picture of what level of service and support is required to improve the current situation. I am confident that the Scottish Government will continue to support Children First and other organisations, but most importantly, the kinship carers themselves in the excellent work they do in the years ahead, as I'm sure the Minister will confirm. 
And whilst there is clearly a need to strengthen and expand the support available to kinship carers, particularly in terms of befriending services and financial support, I'm pleased to note the Scottish Government has been moving in the right direction over the years. Indeed, this Scottish Government was the first to introduce kinship care payments and, for the first time, the Children and Young People Scotland Act 2014 provides specific legal entitlements to support for kinship carers and also for the eligible children themselves. Financial support is clearly of great importance when we consider the increased costs of keeping a dependent child and also the fact that some 43% of kinship carers have to give up work to fulfil the role, causing undoubted financial strain. It is my understanding that the Scottish Government is currently undertaking a financial review of support for kinship carers to consider how best to support kinship care families in the future. Unfortunately, despite assurances from the UK Government during the welfare reform process that they would exempt kinship carers from welfare reform changes for up to a year after they come into effect, including sanctions, return to work interviews, bedroom tax, etc., many are affected. I therefore hope that, along with our colleagues at Westminster, we can compel the UK Government to look again at this issue and recognise the different legislative frameworks for kinship care north and south of the border, ensuring that families get all the benefits they are entitled to on time. Again, I would like to thank my colleague Christine Graham for securing this debate and look for forward to further exploring how we can help those who sacrifice so much to help others. Many thanks. <clears throat> I now call on Dr. Nanette Milne, after which we'll move to the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also commend Christine Graham for securing this evening's debate and for her very moving readings from Through Our Eyes. As a grandmother myself, I'm very much aware of the role, influence and support that grandparents can have in families and their key position in assisting parents who often lead busy lives and at times require a respite from day-to-day -day parenting. When my children were young, I was fortunate enough to work for just two mornings a week, and my mum loved to look after them, using her significant storytelling skills to enthrall and sometimes terrify them with tales of fairies and witches. She loved her involvement with them, and they loved having her around. And my husband and I were able to enjoy the occasional weekend away by ourselves when my parents-in-law had the children to stay, which I suspect was more of a treat for the young ones than it was for the oldies, but they never admitted that they were pleased to hand their young charges back to us. But many grandparents today have very serious childcaring responsibilities, which they sometimes find stressful and onerous, at a time when they've retired from work and had been anticipating a life of their own, with time to do things that were beyond their reach when they were working themselves. Grandparents are often the unsung, unsung, sorry, unsung kinship carers who should be championed and recognised as vital components in the growth and well-being of children and young adults. Christine Graham's motions entitled Through Our Eyes, which, as we know, refers to a truly inspiring book of collections of poems and stories of kinship carers who've been at the coal face of looking after children in a whole manner of circumstances. Having read the rave reviews, not least by Christine Graham herself, I think this will definitely be in my list of summer readings. I haven't read it as yet. As I said, as a grandparent, I know the importance attached to the presence of grannies and granddads in everyday life, and I count myself lucky that I've lived to see my older grandchildren grow up and get to know the newest arrival who will celebrate his first birthday next month. But I've not had to make the very real sacrifices which many kinship carers have, had to, have, to have made to take care of their grandchildren. The charity Grandparents Parenting Again and Kinship Carers, now in its 10th <coughs> year, provides an invaluable service to people in Midlothian, as Christine Graham has described. And similar, similarly, in my hometown of Aberdeen, the work of family law in Rose Street stretches across all areas and includes advice regarding the role of grandparents when families experience divorce or separation. Sadly, grandparents can often be caught in the crossfire of a separation, leading to children not being able to see their grandmothers and grandfathers. I, actually, I, I know kinship carers, though, who have been left literally holding the baby when their own offspring have hit a crisis, whether through drugs or alcohol or a violent domestic relationship. They step in to take the children to a safe place uh, in an emergency when they're not secure at home. And because they're not in a formal caring relationship, they're left without help or support, a situation which may not be resolved in years. They may have to give up their work, indeed their lives, for their grandchildren and they suffer financial hardship and stress, which can endanger their own relationships. But as Christine Graham said, they don't abandon the children they love and care for. I welcome the publication last year of the National Family Mediations Leaflet, which specifically addresses how grandparents can help their grandchildren cope with their lives after parents have separated. I also read with interest the recently published report by Grandparents Plus, which highlights the fact that since the late 1990s, 
Grandparents have increasingly contributed to the upbringing of their grandchildren, but without the financial means which come, come with being registered as a formal kinship carer, a carer of looked after children. Figures going back to 2010 showed that one in every hundred children lives with a grandparent because they cannot for some reason live with a birth parent. At the same time, more than one million children in the UK are denied contact with at least one of their grandparents. I have incredible sympathy with grandparents who voluntarily give up their time to look after their grandchildren without the necessary backup from the state. If we want to reduce the benefits bill and get parents into work, then we must also look at assisting grandparents who step into child-minding roles. To conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, can I just say that all of us in this chamber and many outside recognise the enormous contribution to society made by kinship carers in general. But I do feel that more emphasis needs to be placed on respite and allowing such carers much needed time out from what can be a very pressurised job looking after loved ones. Again, I thank Christine Graham for tabling the motion and allowing us to celebrate these unsung heroes. Thank you. Many thanks. And I call on the Minister uh, Fiona MacLeod to close the debate on behalf of the Government. Seven minutes are thereby, please, Minister. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I begin by echoing other members' thanks to Christine Graham for bringing this very important issue before Parliament. Christine, you have allowed us to highlight to Parliament and to the rest of Scotland the great work carried out by Grandparents Parenting Again and by Kinship Carers in Midlothian and indeed all kinship carers and kinship care groups throughout Scotland. Um, so an absolute salute and thanks to all the kinship carers for the work that they're doing. You've also introduced this librarian to a lovely collection of stories that I didn't know, um, which was a delight to read. Sometimes quite difficult, but informative, and I'll return to that later. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government believes that the best place for a child to live whenever a child needs to leave its birth parents is in the wider family if it is safe and in the best interests of the child to do so. This way allows the child to retain a sense of family, of identity and heritage, and helps a, a child to feel safe, protected and valued. There are many children and young people in Scotland who are living in kinship care arrangements. Christine Graham highlighted some of the numbers. In 2014, there were 4,181 looked after children living with family and friends. And we estimate that there may be as many as 15,000 non-looked-after children living in informal kinship care arrangements. Those numbers again highlight how important kinship carers are and how much gratitude we have to show towards them. The Scottish Government recognises the crucial role played by kinship carers in providing secure, stable and nurturing homes. Kinship carers who take on this responsibility are providing a valuable service and it is therefore vital that we provide them with the right support at the right time to care for their children. That's why we as a government since 2007 have done much to address kinship carers' specific needs. If I can highlight just a few of our actions. In 2009, we established the Looked After Children Scotland regulations, which for the first time gave local authorities the power to pay an allowance to kinship carers of looked after children. The Children and Young People Act of last year enhances the support available to kinship carers of non looked after children who obtain an order under Section 11.1 of the Children's Scotland Act 1995, which gives them parental responsibilities and rights, residence or guardianship. And that will now be called a kinship care order. And perhaps addresses some of the, the uh, questions that Malcolm Chisholm asked, because that means that there will, for the first time, be a specific legal entitlement to support for kinship carers of non-looked-after eligible children subject to a kinship care order and also for the eligible children themselves, which I think is important um, to realise. This government believes that the support for kinship care as set out in the Act and subsequently through secondary legislation will make a real and positive difference to kinship carers and the children in their care. However, we recognise that more can be done to support kinship carers and those in their care and that there is a need for greater fairness in the provision of allowances. That's why we are currently reviewing the financial support available to kinship carers with a view to tailoring support and tackling inconsistencies across Scotland. Kenneth Gibson, 
raised the position of uh, benefits and I'm sure he knows, but it's worth putting on the record, that a couple of years ago the Scottish Government did manage to work with the DWP to get a benefits disregard for kinship carers uh, so that they didn't lose out on their local authority allowances. But absolutely, we have to continue uh, to be vigilant and to work with the UK Government to ensure that any changes in benefits don't actually impact negatively on our kinship carers. I was interested in the first reading that uh, Christine made from the book because it allows me to highlight the further support that we provide kinship families because in her, in her first reading she talked about how the jargon busting and how um, it, when it's new especially there's such a maze for the kinship carers to work through and since 2011 the Scottish Government has uh, funded to the tune of about a million pounds uh, Citizens Advice Scotland, Children First and Mentor UK to deliver information, advice and support to kinship carers. This has ensured that hundreds of kinship care families throughout Scotland have had access to the right supports at the right time for them. And I do hope that is, um, you know, that I'm, I'm absolutely on solid ground in saying that, that that support is out there to help kinship carers. So all these policies and programmes demonstrate how much the Scottish Government values kinship carers and that we are committed to tackling inequalities and ensuring that kinship care families are fully supported to carry out this important role. As I said earlier, I think that Through Your Eyes is a wonderful book which not only demonstrates the difficulties that can be encountered by kinship carers, but also emphasises the happiness, the laughter and the joy that the role can bring, as uh, evidenced by um, when Christine Graham read out the fifth extract. I also think... Certainly. Christine Graham. I wonder if the Minister would add her support to my call and the kinship carers' call for social workers to be made aware of this book so that they... They understand that, the, that many of the, the kinship carers keep quiet about a lot of stuff when they're dealing with the professionals that the professionals ought to really know about. Ms Graham has just got in before I came to the librarian bit <laughs> because I absolutely believe that this book will become part of the body of evidence for practitioners and for students in social work. I, you know, as a librarian, everybody hears me talking about the evidence and it's all about peer-reviewed and random controlled trials, but part of the body of evidence is for practitioners to understand through real-life stories what it is really like to be a kinship carer. So again, I commend this book and again, I salute kinship carers throughout Scotland for the role that they play in ensuring that the children and young people in their care are safe, secure, nurtured and loved, enabling them to go on and lead happy and successful lives. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And thank you, Minister, and thank you all for taking part in this important debate. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.